So welcome to Sofia. Thank you very much. Where are you flying from today? So I came from Copenhagen um, this morning. Okay, I think your movie is on. Is that your movie? Yeah. Okay, can you go the? Can you, can you pull it? Play <laughs> on the screen now. Yeah. Uh, uh, so, yeah, I just wanted to to. So I'm a, I'm from advertising, and somehow I landed up in technology, which is really weird. But basically, I just love to get attention. That's <laughs> <laughs> that's what the movie is about to illustrate. So that was the first advertising campaign we did online for my antivirus product. What was that? <laughs> it was back when we, we launched on top of Kesar, we launched an antivirus company because it was obvious that there was a lot of companies spamming viruses into Kesar to the file sharing networks. And I got this idea that we could launch an antivirus company on top of Kesar. But even getting to these 400 million screens was not enough to build the brand and get the attention up against McAfee and Norton. And then we got uh, to this idea and I, we. We, we named this whole idea of, of viral movies, and I think we cornered the term as well and made a company called Go Viral that we then, s my friend sold to AOL. And from that part of it, my, uh, my, from my advertising background, my, my oldest partner also got sold to AOL, and he's now the CEO of Huffington Post, Jimmy Mayman. So it's very nice. That's, it's where I started, yeah. I, I would like to rewind a little bit uh, back because. I'm, I strongly suspect that some of the people are way below our generation and they may not even know about some of your, of, of your history. And um, the title I, I chose was just a tagline from your own website, which was uh, uh, happy, crazy, and naive 100 startups later. Did you really back 100 startups? Yeah, again, because I came from advertising, then um, back when we, we started our first company together, we were four, four friends who watched a lot of, and, and this, I mean, half of this audience will not even know what Melrose Place is, but <laughs> it was a fun TV series, and there was a lot of hot women. And we, we basically wanted to have a workplace where we could work together, and there would be a lot of hot people around us. So we built the, the biggest advertising agency in Scandinavia that way. And, and leading out of that, I was used to every day, I mean, and we also did a lot of digital consulting, so I was used to, I mean, for breakfast we could e easily have Carlsberg, we could have the government for, for lunch for a meeting, <laughs> and then we could easily have uh, yeah, Nike at, in the afternoon playing with their digital strategy. That's what you do when you have an agency. And, and, and com so coming out of that, we also ha always had these discussions at our agency, whether if we're so crazy good at this stuff, why don't we just build it ourselves? But it was too early, this is 96 to 99, when the browser was unstable, the, the internet information server from Microsoft didn't really work yet. I mean, things were not like, you guys are so fucking lucky today, and you have all these out-of-the-box Amazon servers, all this stuff that you just get for free. We had to, we, we had to somehow make it work. I mean, you remember, then, back then you had to have half, 10, 90% of your investment would be for hardware. It would be money going to IBM for just setting up the rails for this, for the hardware. Yeah. And now you get fired just if you tell them you're buying any hardware. Yeah, yeah, of course. You, I mean, you can have some subscriptions or some s I mean, software as a service, yes. Absolutely. So the long, very long answer to how do I get involved with 100 companies, I created more than 100 campaigns per year anyway in the agency. So going out of that, we sold the agency. We're super wealthy already. We're like 27, 8. And it was obvious to start to invest and create all these ideas that was my own. And it, it's, it's probably 200 companies that I've been helping to found or founded myself or invested in somehow. I think people here would probably, at, at least they recognize the name Skype. Maybe they don't recognize the first name, but can you just rewind a quick one and tell us how you got involved and was it luck or was it skill or was it timing? It's like most of other things with me. I'm a little bit like Bob Geldof, you know, I'm a really bad musician, but I know the right people on both sides. You know. <laughs> So, <laughs> so, so the, yeah, so back in our, again, our advertising company, we helped a Swedish company called Tiller 2, and those two guys working there called Nicholas and Janus. <laughs> and they, 
then they, they came to our office, you know, we, we worked with them on the Taylor 2 business case, and then we had probably 20, 40 people working on that from our agency. And they kept calling me, you know, if I wanted to do something else, they wanted to do this music project, and there was a business plan looked like what later became iTunes, but because they couldn't get the rights from all the um, record labels, then they, they just, it, it became Kazaa, and it became <laughs> a little bit of a, a crazy, so that became the biggest digital lawsuit in history, probably. So 17 record labels were funding, I mean, had open funding, just to whatever the, the lawyers could find on us, they would just throw at us and, and try to take us down. So that, and there was 400 million users in back in, what, 2000, 2003. And during that, I mean, luckily I didn't invest in it, because then I would have had all these lawsuits. <laughs> but then they started, I mean, we, 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 we started bouncing on our other ideas, and we talked about th something we called Skyper, which should be a Wi-Fi sharing network. But back then, I mean, the Wi-Fi was, it took an hour to set it up and plug the card in. So we kind of killed that idea, and then somebody was like, we, we talked a lot on the phone with all continents, we moved the company, I mean, Kazaz, Vanuatu, it was, it was a mess. And somebody got up with the idea that we could also just call it Skype and then see if we could, I mean, there was a lot of com computers were coming out with, with, a, with a microphone and a very nice sound card. So maybe people would start talking finally on their phones. You could do it actually, on, there were 10 or 15 other competitors. But then we started playing with that and I still didn't believe in it, but I paid their apartments because they, they had no money. And it was stopped all the time, the project, because of no money and lawsuits and all kind of shit. So, Luckily, I, yeah, I ended up designing quite a lot of the early product. I mean, it's, it's just make it slim and simple versus ICQ, which was like 17,000 buttons you couldn't find your way around. And then fighting with this thing called Microsoft Messenger. <laughs> was every investor was just looking at us like lame. Wh who the fuck do you want to compete with Microsoft Messenger? It's built into Windows. <laughs> and we're like, yeah, we're going to kill them. <laughs> <laughs> so that was a little weird. Um, but then the rest is history. I got a, a, a nice pool of shares. I helped building the brand, and I, I have this, I, I have this allergy to companies with any kind of uh, size over 50 people. I, I, I really get allergy, mm. so I had to leave. I'm going to uh, try to. Uh, this is not my, this is not something I said, but I, I like it. There is a quote which says, "We tend to think we're smarter than we really are, and we know, and that we." Uh, know more than, than we really do, and the overconfidence can climb along with the markets leading some folks to trade excessively. If I flip back to the Skype and to what followed, can you relate to that and say, you know, what, you know, do fuck ups help? Or, or, or they're just something that happens along the way and then you navigate using your luck and your instinct? I, I don't know. I mean, I think it's. Everybody wants to talk about the startups because then there's, there's some magnitude. There's in WhatsApp, the, the big things happen very fast. Skype got sold for f four billion. But, but but we pivoted, we changed, we fucked up. But isn't that like every also our careers in life? I mean, I think it's it's just evolution, and 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 most startups or most companies are pivots. Um, many of the biggest companies in the world started doing something else. Well, now Nokia is out again, but they started in rubber boots, and then they ended up being yeah, having 60% of the I mean, uh, on the cell phone market, and now they're dead. I mean. Very good. Um, I will try to steer the discussion from where we are now to a little bit going back to this region because you have not been here for a while, and <laughs> it's been a while since. <laughs> Since when, when, when you arrived, you, you shared, oh, wow, it's been a long time, but then you kind of felt, ah, this place is new, it feels like a new vibe, you like the juice that we had downstairs, and, yeah, yeah. and, and also we have the task of waking up the audience because it's now kind of past coffee time, and we need to do something different. Can I please have the slide? I have one slide which I wanted to discuss um, with you, and this is um, uh, probably, um, you recall this uh, happiness index. And in the happiness index, Denmark, where you come from, was consistently ranked the happiest country in the world. And I was like, why is this happening, you know? So, and then you have, I want to correlate this with another slide, and it's not super well visible, but this is how venture capital or entrepreneurial capital 
is uh, ranked according to the uh, uh, European Venture Capital Association. And basically what it tells you is some countries have a lot of venture capital, so entrepreneurial spirit is very, very high, and some other countries have not so much. And I think the bottom of the line here, you see Greece, Italy, Ukraine, Bulgaria, Poland, uh, and Czech. And then on top there, you have Sweden, Finland, Ireland. So countries with bad weather, essentially. <laughs> but <laughs> okay. So t I mean, this is really a question for me to resolve. I think Denmark is probably closer to the top than than. Or oh, actually, it's right in the no, middle. No, we're not. Yeah, we're not. So right in high the middle. Ranking. I mean, it, the top three is obvious. It's just weird that Ireland is not winning because they're the only ones without hot women. <laughs> um, but yeah, Finland, but what? But it's, but it's dark all the time. Why? Why does? Why does Denmark? Why is Denmark the happiest place to live? Well, I think it's it's because I mean, if you go all the way back, actually, the king was not too far from the farmers. So always, it has been. We've been the the the, the rulers have been very close to the people, and then during the fifties and the sixties, we developed uh, welfare. And my daughter, you know, she doesn't even know how fucking lucky she is. So she goes, she's 25 now. She's been going to free school, free universities, high-ranking schools. She gets $1,000 for free from the government every month to study. And she can barely, I mean, she can bicycle around naked in the city without getting raped or killed. It's an amazing, stable, and nice country. And I think even though we had shit weather, we know the, the other things compensate. And then some. <laughs> <laughs> Does your prime minister fly helicopter to go to a football game? No, uh, she's a friend, and uh, she's good branding for our country. But she's also she, I mean, she's pretty low key. Okay. Okay. Um, that's very good. So uh, maybe to kind of switch and go on to the next. Uh, there was a reason why uh, this is not your first. Uh, a visit to Bulgaria, I, I know that a while ago you found a bunch of people that you thought were very smart and, uh, and, and I thought the same. Um, <laughs> now I want to just show you how, how life evolved since then. Uh, uh, and I, can I ask for the, for the movie, please, which, for the short clip, which is uh, two minutes of your time to just kind of go back and try to um, see what happened in the last five years since you last came. Do you know that the best programming talent is not in California? It is in Bulgaria. According to Stack Overflow, Bulgaria is the number one country in terms of IT developers, leading the ranking of all nations with the highest average reputation. Do you know that Bulgaria has the highest level of broadband adoption in the world at 96%, just edging out South Korea? It was 10th just two years ago. Or that three Bulgarians are going to connect over one million internet users in giant India, not spending a dollar on building a broadband infrastructure? And these are not some wandering black swan effects that we breed here, but the consistent outcome from connecting the dots of local innovation and entrepreneurial talent. In a global perspective, Bulgaria is located in the center of the most diverse area, populated by two-thirds of one billion, bridging east and west and it could be a greatly functioning hub of technology growth and innovation for emerging markets. Ten years ago, we at Nevik were the first to recognize and start digging in this potential, although many thought that we were just daydreamers. Ten years ago, when we started securing our first 20 million risk capital, Facebook, Viber and Uber did not yet exist, and people chatted via ICQ. Our first deal was negotiated on the great Sony Ericsson Z500. Ten years ago, the world perceived Bulgaria at best to be a little more expensive India for outsourcing some mundane coding and low-profile development job. But we believe that local talent should not remain anonymous among the Zero Ones and is ready to be unlocked by an experienced hand. We envisioned Bulgaria as a leader in creating breakthrough technology products that achieve growth and are sold to global players. Today, 50 million US dollars later, two funds under management, five successful exits, two of them by our fund, and a digital revolution over. We feel our underdog concept is on the right track more than ever. Some of our current investments register triple-digit growth per month. 
Properati is a market leader in mobile applications for property search on the Latin American market of 400 million consumers. CashWave is disrupting the traditional regulated money transfer by a tech solution that sends shopping vouchers at low to zero costs in markets with $4 billion in annual remittances. Vayant Travel Technologies, a world leader in B2B airfare search innovation, is today welcoming Deutsche Lufthansa as a new investor. And these are just single champions yet. But tomorrow there will be 500, 1,000 teams in top profitable verticals. Today, technology is a commodity. It is the human that matters. What is still very challenging, to have a vision whose innovation will be able tomorrow to outsmart itself and further solve a people's need in a unique way. This is more, I wanted to kind of, first of all, this is for my team, but you, you are one of these hands that unlock. This is how I really saw it at the time, because you actually turned our attention to the fact that, okay, we may be completely underestimating what we can create. So it was a clash, but it was a super positive outcome because it made us believe. Yeah, for you. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, but this is, so, so something happened which was yeah. very, very positive. Yeah. Do you, do you subscribe to the concept that um, in sp uh, kind of it is also a mission to, to go and unlock and in give confidence to people? Th is, this what, is, this, is this how uh, small stories are different from big stories? Like, uh, wh what's your view on that? I mean, there's no doubt that, that starting a company is extreme. It has a lot to do with communications. I mean, you have to be able to, to, to get through I mean the, the the media and uh, through the P the PR that that generates the, the the attention to your products, and and I think that's that's a skill you cannot learn. Um, but then at the same time, you can also not just promote stuff that doesn't have substance. So of course, I mean you have to take a. I was just lucky, you know, early uh, starting with the advertising agency, selling that, being part of Skype, being part of really big things that probably some of it will be remembered a little bit more than a week. So, so I, can, I can arrive with a certain you know, um, self-confidence and, and also impact because I've been investing from the early days with Evan Williams from, he did Blogger when I was in his kitchen and, uh, and then he started this weird thing with 140 characters called Twitter. I mean, all of these are my friends, but not, not like, just like the guys who also didn't know what to do in 2000 because it was all weird and there was, I mean, the, ex the bubble exploded. So, so taking all that knowledge and then being in love with, 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 with making people grow, this whole um, kingmaker idea, take a really good guy and give him the, that extra self-confidence and, and, and help him and, and be there. And, and then despite having quite a large ego, I don't need, I mean, I don't need to be CEO. I can't be the CEO. I know my limits. So, so I, can, I can really, I, I do a lot of this uh, coaching and also taking the vision Enlarging the vision. Okay. Um, there is a uh, there is a, a, a very famous uh, well he's a scientist, a writer, Zeus, who wrote his most famous book only using fifty different words. Uh, that statistic is a bit shocking, but this is a book that has been sold multiple times around the world, and he only wrote it using 50 different words. What is the value of being short and being, uh, what is the value of kind of con being able to congest your message in, a, in, a, in 50 different words, even if, if it was a very, very long message? I think the, the answer is... Talking to an advertising guy here now. No, but it, that, that is the thing. Mark Twain said, you know, I'm writing a long letter because I didn't have the time to write a short. I mean, it's, it's very difficult. It's, it's impossible. Also, I, I mean, I, I suppose because I come from communication and advertising, you know, these American guys, the Square guys, Twitter, I mean, how they present their website, how they present their business cases, the, the, the copywriting there is just, it's just sparkling good. I mean, and we all, I mean, we could all, most people here could do a Twitter. I mean, it's not that hard, but they get traction, they get it done. They, the same with, with Facebook. All, I mean, these platforms where it's intuitive, it's sticky, you, you end up using it because it's, it's well explained. 
it, it, yeah, so it's few words or ma many words. I mean, you have very the, the attention is short is the attention span is shorter than ever. Yeah. Very good. I think it's good if we open it up now a bit to the floor and get some questions. If there's any uh, brave soul to uh, to give us some questions before they kick us out, so I'd like to open it up and uh, see if anyone has a question to to Morton, of course, or to myself. Normally, there's no questions. Normally, there's no questions. So, so I have I have something that uh, that interests me, and I because I, I'm so happy to be here. I mean, I, I've met some of the smartest people in my life here in in Sofia. Some there was also an idiot who fucked me over so hard that I can't live with it. But <laughs> I have to get it out get it out of my body. But but I want to. I mean, I'm very interested in the, in the talent. It's it's no no wonder that you also what you showed in the video. So I want, I want everyone to start thinking a little bit about two or three big, big things. So basically, what will happen now, and it will not happen when you're when you among the smartest guys, but normal, boring jobs will get killed. We will see a global unemployment rate that will explode because computers are actually coming now to do shit. They will also drive the cars themselves, because if you put a sensor on top of a car, with like, I mean, that takes 200,000 impressions per second. It's a little bit better than a guy, you know, texting <laughs> while he's driving, you know. <laughs> so, so, so that's going to happen. We, we're going to see some, some mega trends in the whole, with the 3D printing, with the artificial intelligence. All of that, I mean, I'm just, I'm just super curious to hear everything from everyone, things, what, what's going on in a society like this, because you live in a little bit of a weird country. Can I say that? Totally. Yeah. Thank you. But I, I'm, I'm very interested to see how does that unfold here because it has also never before in history been, been possible to, to play with all of this at such an easy speed. And you can also buy or rent an old big sample of data where you can run your thesis. Yeah. So, so, so what's happening in, in this I mean, super brain society with these weird political structures? And I mean, this is so strange place. Do you want to direct this question to an entrepreneur or to a banker? I, I don't care. I mean, somebody must have uh, see something crazy happening. Here's a hand there in the... Yes, a, a microphone, please. Can we have a microphone? Or we can just repeat the question. Just yeah. shoot. All right. Uh, I'll answer you actually with a joke. And uh, it's uh, uh, unfortunately uh, a bit unfortunate joke, but that's... Uh, in Bulgaria, there is a big herd of drivers that are going to test how to actually push off that artificial intelligent driver <laughs> off the roads. <laughs> so, yeah, that's, that's the answer of your question. Okay, so that was for my suspected entrepreneur. I think there's a bunker right there in the middle. Would you like to volunteer, Philip, an answer to that question? <laughs> okay, this was, this was uh, unfair. Anyone else? So, um, anyone else has an answer to um, to Morton's question, or anybody has a question to Morton, or myself? So, let's hand over there. Hi, I have a question. Um, Can you introduce yourself very briefly, or you, you sure, say you don't want to introduce yourself? That's also fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess I just jump directly to the question. My name is Dian Mikhailov, and. Uh, I'm working on a very exciting project between Denmark and Bulgaria, and this is what my question is related to. Uh, for a couple of years, uh, there have been several companies here, startups, between Denmark and Bulgaria, because in Denmark, there are great business ideas. People are really great at building global and very, very good companies. And as you saw right now, here we have very good engineering talent. Uh, there have been several cases, as I said, of companies that uh, use this to build really, really great ventures between the two countries. So I was wondering, in your opinion, what could be a good way to connect the two ecosystems, the Danish one and the Bulgarian one, and hopefully creating some great businesses? Well, thank you for, for answering. And, and this answer is not because I don't like you. <laughs> but the answer is that be very careful with thinking about anything fixed ge geographic. I mean, the internet is kind of global, and you have to use whatever platform where I mean where you get the best bang for bang for the buck. Whether it's ideas from Denmark, Salesforce in India, engineers from here, 
all of that will just mix up. So basically, I'm trying to teach my children already now to, I mean, also the younger ones, to, to just use the, the freelance markets online. And all of you guys who will definitely have struggles with use, I mean, making this perfect American business plan, you can go on Hourly Nerd. You can buy Ivy League super smart kits on, a, on an hourly basis to write, to write your business plan. You, all of this is online in, in, in different markets. So, so thinking about this from a, a Denmark meets Bulgaria or uh, Greece goes to India, it, it, it doesn't really matter. It's about your talent and your, your ability to, to, to get out there. And then, of course, it's, it's about sales. A lot of companies, I mean, you're, you're experiencing that as well, that a lot of companies build these products in the basement and then they, after two years they get up and they suddenly see, hey, there's no clients outside the door. You probably have to go chase <laughs> them, okay? It's a little bit like getting laid as a man. <laughs> it's, it's, you have to ask a lot for, to, to get sales going, yeah? <laughs> and, and that thing, I, I mean, it's, it's a big surprise to me. But, but to me, I think that the, another revolution that's coming now is crowdfunding. I mean, you can, you can put a project on anywhere on uh, Indiegogo, on Kickstarter, and actually have people to buy it before it's there. I mean, that's trust in another dimension as well. And then for me, the freelance platforms are, I mean, they're, they're changing the game. And, and it's also something I'm moving a little bit into. And, uh, and I see that also on the biggest schools, and I think everybody with a big heart, they want to do impact investment or impact projects. And, and that's why I'm spending most of my time right now, um, besides building super boring enterprise software, I'm trying to, to, to make loans in different categories where it makes sense. I want to be a little bit of, uh, I love this Robin Hood idea with Skype. We, we took a lot of money from the big fat telcos who overcharged us for talking internationally. They killed business by charging so much because we couldn't just have an open line. With, with these loans that I'm trying to give to small e-commerce shops, we want to give them loans so they can get started because if a small web shop, how many here has a web shop? Wow, shit, that was very few. You should have, <laughs> you should, you should have one each. But, but small web shops can't go to the bank because the bank will just look at them like, well, you have revenue from this thing called PayPal, what's that? They don't even know that it's the world's largest bank very soon. All of these, these dimensions are I like helping people to, to, to expand from a, from a lower level, from a non-bankable area. And, and what I, if you combine that also with the, with the freelance platforms, there are, there are 15 million people on freelance platforms now. How many here are on a freelance platform working freelance? I mean, you're golden engineers, half of you. Why the fuck don't you make the money in freelance? <laughs> but what I have, what I've tried now is, is an a, extremely interesting project that we're doing out of Bangladesh, where I was extremely lucky to get the the, the, the founder and the, the guy who invented the micro loan, Mohammed Yunus. He basically gave 28 million women a loan to I mean buy a goat or a, a, a chicken or whatever. This is called a micro loan. The only pre prerequisite was they showed up five days in a row. They end up five women in a circle promising each other that they will all pay back because if one of them don't pay back, they can't get the next loan. And the whole idea with a business loan is that you need one more. So he, he also invested in this crazy idea I had where you could play, go on these online platforms, find people who are underprivileged, who gets really low salary, and then give them a loan to, to upgrade themselves. And if you play the, uh, the second movie now, that would probably underline my thesis. <laughs> <laughs> okay. My name is Fatten and Kjolf and I'm the co-founder and CEO of Coders Trust. What if I told you that there would be one million more available IT jobs than students by 2020? This will create a $500 billion opportunity. And at the same time, the job market is moving online. Right now, there are more than 14 million registered freelancers worldwide, and the market is growing to 160 million by 2020. This creates a $2 billion market, which will grow to $5 billion within the next four years. However, the majority of freelancers are doing basic jobs where the only differentiation is price. Coders Trust upgrades their skills so they earn 10 US dollars instead of 2 US dollars. But let's meet Ella, one of our current students that wants to make a difference.
in my country there are many talented people who wants to make a difference and if they can work from their own home they have a chance they can earn money they only need a laptop and access to the internet and of course guidance Coders just give us a little amount of money and a perfect guideline to build our career. It will turn an overcrowded country into human resources. It will change my life and the whole development of our country. My name is Ila. I am 25 years old. and i come from dhaka in bangladesh coders trust vision is to provide universal access to paid education by giving them a student loan of 200 us dollars per month access to education and the labor market they will earn three times as much as the average worker in the country coders trust makes 2000 us dollars in profit per student which is 200 million US dollars when we onboard 100,000 students. And the lender, the financial institution makes 7 to 10% as a return on investment in only 18 months. But most important, we provide all IT talents with an opportunity to make a difference in the world. Thank you very much. I think the the point of doing this was maybe we wanted to find the next big thing and I think we probably just got a little glimpse into where the next big thing may be. Thank you very much, I'm Martin. I'm just I'm super happy to be here and I am also I I think it's it's an underlying truth but we we've been fighting 2 years in court <laughs> and said a lot of bad shit to each other. <laughs> <laughs> and now we're It's here. Cool to be here. <laughs> <So> <laughs> Thank you. Right.